Thank you so much for being here. I want to get right to it. What was the genesis of making Honey and Ashes? It's a very different element. I think the fact that I grew up in Switzerland and uh, was separated uh, of my dad for many years and then would go back to Egypt and live with my dad and with my family. And certainly I was very close to my aunt at that time. I was kind of the guarant for her when she would meet and search for her future husband. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I saw many things and I was very uh, sensitive and close to my aunt. So I think the first person who sparked the idea for Honey and Ashes was actually my aunt in Cairo. Hmm. So I'm from Egypt, I'm half Swiss, half Egyptian. My mom is Swiss, my dad is Egyptian. I grew up uh, most of the part of, through, during my childhood in Switzerland with some force back and forth to Egypt. And uh, I think that was uh, this, this uh, moment when I was a young girl and I saw my aunt, how many difficulties she had to go through to get a decent man, which she then got divorced later and remarried, got divorced and remarried. So today my aunt is actually the second wife of somebody. So what was the dynamic about her that made you want to make a film? I think the courage. I mean, myself, I was a pretty rebel girl mm -hmm. when I grew up. I think the fact that I was more Egyptian than Swiss, and but would grow up in Switzerland, I was always a fish out of water. And that's what uh, stroke me, the, the, the courage of the women. Mm. I was always very connected to the courage and the rebellious side of mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. So my auntie was also quite rebellious, which then kind of rubbed off on you. Rubbed <laughs> off. So uh, yeah, I think that's, that, that was like a combination of things, of impressions, of, of, of stories that I saw, of stories that I was told and also other other girlfriends that I had in, in Morocco and mm. Tunisia. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a long maturing process. It was like, you know, I had this idea many, before I went to grad school, I, I went to NYU grad school. It's basically my thesis project. <laughs> I never say it, but that's what it is. And my cinematographer, Ismail Ramirez, oh, can wow. you just at least cool. get up, please, my dear Thank friend? You. Also NYU student, oh, wow. former. <laughs> so we were all together in class and uh, he was the one who came with me to Tunisia to shoot this film. And we got even some lenses from NYU for free. I shouldn't say that, <laughs> but it's many years ago, so it's all good. <laughs> um, well, the strength of women Oh, thank you. Thank you. Our, uh, the strength of women is very apparent in this movie, and in a lot of ways, it's an extremely radical film. You made it almost yes. 25 years ago, and that's incredible, right? The, the dialogue and the narrative that you're having in here, especially in a Muslim country, there's so many fragments of it, which I couldn't even believe that you got away with. Um, it's very impressive. Uh, what was the reception of the film almost 25 years ago in Tunisia, in Egypt, and has it changed? No, it hasn't changed. It's still uh, the film is still traveling around the world. Uh, it's a, actually a very strange thing. So the reaction in the Middle East of the men in Tunisia, they were fighting outside the movie theater to get in to see this film. In Egypt, they were so proud, I'm Egyptian for them, so <laughs> they were so proud. I was showing it in Alexandria with all my uncles, with, all, with my dad, and only men. There were 600 men watching this film, and two women in that place. And I was next to my dad, uh, so I felt kind of protected. <laughs> so uh, it was a standing ovation. In Europe, the men reacted differently. They would say 
this is uh, a feminist film, this is portraying the man cowardly, this is, uh, they were criticizing the, the basically my stand point of view that I took as a woman to tell stories about women and through their point of view. So I told them, but if we take another film that's, to, that's we tell about a story about man through the point of view of man, we don't even notice as a public that it's a point of view of a man because we always have the point of view well, of man. Well, it's seen as neutral, right? That's the neutral position. Yeah. So, you know, of course, of course, this is a woman's film, meaning this is, this is telling stories about women and it's through their point of view. Of course, there will, it's not balanced, no. It's their <laughs> point of view. That's so interesting from Tunisia to Egypt to Europe. Yes. Um, I just read the Variety uh, piece that came out about Honey and Ashes, and that was also calling it a feminist film. And um, I went, I scrolled up to see who wrote it, and it was written by this guy called Kyle Rooney, who was probably not an Arab woman. And I thought it was really interesting, you know, that uh, this perspective is is so righteous, you know, like oh my God, this is a feminist film when you're just like, this is my perspective, as yes, you're saying. Yes. Um, I have never, just, just uh, it's, it's pretty important. I have never approached this film as a feminist film. I didn't wake up one day and I said, oh, I'm gonna do a feminist <laughs> film. And I'm gonna tell only stories about women. No, it came to me very organically. It came to me through observations, through sensibilities, through connecting with courage. For me, uh, it's a very important uh, uh, ingredient in life, mm. uh, courage. Mm. I always admired courageous women. I always wanted to be a courageous woman. I'm still battling Ooh. to be a courageous women, woman. So for me, it's a, it's a value that is it's important in my life. It's important for me to stand up, to speak up. I admire all the women who do that, and I still am very influenced about these women. I'm also working on a new, on a new project, which is with a big rebel from Egypt. Her name is Nawal El Sadawi. <gasps> she was. This movie reminded me yes. of her work. Yes. Yeah. And and now I'm doing a personal work. It's called Letter to My Dad because wow. my dad. Uh, uh, passed away in 2014 during the Egyptian Revolution. So I'm I'm writing an image imag imaginary letter to my dad through three mm. women generations about womanhood. And one of the oldest generation is Nawal El Sadawi. Me, I'm the middle one. And then we have the young generation of today between 20 and 30 years old. So that's, that's, that's a kind of a continuation of this film 23 years later. Mm. So as a director, yeah. Uh, Nawal El Sadawi is also an incredible writer that you should check out if you haven't already. Um, She's a real rebel. She is a real rebel. Um, was it actually inspired at all, this film, uh, by her? I, I don't know at that. Maybe I mean, part. I read some, already one book mm -hmm. of her, but it wasn't, no, it was, it was more private stuff. Mm -hmm. It was really more family or my aunt or my friends. It was kind of who I was hanging around with at that time. Well, as this sort of leads me to my next question, as a director, what kind of stories do you gravitate towards? Obviously, you're saying that you are inspired by courageous women, but is there something that s s narratively you're struck by? Yes, I think uh, fish out of water is my theme. Mm. I think that, for example, my next feature is a coming out story of a gay, Arabic gay person in the diplomatic milieu at the UN. His father is a big UN diplomat. Mm. It's based on a real story. Uh, so I, it's, it's, it's a gay man, I'm not gay, uh, but I can identify in that sense of fish out of water. It means that we are kind of always searching for for uh, 
being comfortable mm -hmm. in the surrounding and being ourselves. So uh, I share many things with gay people because of that uh, of that element. Do you find that um, you respond to being lab the labels of being Arab or a woman that are imposed onto you? Do you, or do you find them as limitations? Well, I can be a little bit ironic, I hope. In Hollywood, where I live and where I try to make it, uh, <laughs> it's a very good time now, mm. being a woman and Arabic, because we have the whole thing about diversity. Hmm? That buzzword. So that is great. It's just good timing. <laughs> But 10 years ago, there was no way. Yeah. Nor because I'm Arabic, that's for sure. And as a woman, it's, it's still very difficult, yes. I think it's still very difficult to, be, I mean, I'm struggling still after all these years to get my features done, to get my documentaries done. Uh, I don't give up because I want to be courageous. Mm. But I'm continuing. So yes, it's it's. I think right now for me it's a good time in Hollywood. Yes, <laughs> but it was for many many years. Uh, it would be just uh, closed doors. Yeah, I mean, even just their stories of Muslims or Arabs are just so completely limited. Um, you just don't see that kind of work being made yet. Um, no, that's what I'm trying yeah. to do. That's yeah, exactly that's why I'm there. Yeah. Yes, I, I try to, to give some point of views from, uh, not from the news, not from CNN, not from Fox, <laughs> but just from people who actually live in America, are Muslims, and believe in the values that they share in the country they live. So I think it's important to raise women who are to, to raise voices of women who are Muslims, who are um, also, I'm binational, so I'm Swiss, Swiss and I, so I'm also European. I grew up in Europe. So it's, I think it's very important, this mix, to bring to the table and open doors for respect towards people from other cultures. Yes, I do believe that. And I do believe that it's important as directors to speak up and to develop your own voices. It took me years to have self-confidence. I have it today. Oh. <laughs> what a great answer. Today, I was telling myself, Faria, you need more self-confidence. So that's, this is really wonderful was, to hear. It's a process, yeah, it's, it's a process. It was a 22 year struggle, <laughs> I guess. And I struggle, there are days and days, but I feel I'm, I'm, I'm there to, to be able to attack that that chapter of Hollywood. <laughs> Attack that chapter. That is a good bio autobiography <laughs> chapter. Um, what have been some of the most moving messages that you've received about Honey and Ashes over the years? I imagine a lot oh, of God, people that's gravitate. Twenty-two years old. Uh, yeah. Has there been anything that? Yes, I think the most compliments that I got, I got also critiques. Huh? Don't get me wrong. Uh, but the most compliments I got was the human, the human element, like the the development of the characters and how you kind of get into their uh, soul or brain or heart, how you can get actually in in their in their lives, mm. and how this human puzzle. It's three women's stories, so it's puzzled together. How this puzzle can actually uh, give you strong and intense emotions. So that was the most compliment, is like the human element in that, like how I humanize mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the people. Totally, yes. and that how people connect to that yes. across culture, across faith. Yes. Um, that's what yes. gives it so much meaning. And also the, it was important for me the, the factor of universal. So if you, if you analyze, we are not here to analyze, but if you analyze the three stories, you can find these three stories in Europe and you can find them in the US. So I was very uh, preoccupied 
that I take three stories that we could find in each mm. culture mm. so we don't say, oh, that's over there. That happens over there. That happens not in our country. So that was a very important factor for me to, to you know, I, I tried to build bridges basically without being an engineer. <laughs> 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 I like that. Um, a couple of years ago, I interviewed this Indian filmmaker named uh, Lena Yadav, who made this film called Parched. And it was also about a lot of domestic abuse in India in more regional um, spaces. And what was really fascinating to her was the shock that Western audiences had of, the, of what was happening. And... Um, she said it was really frustrating for her because she's just like, exactly what you just said, it's not as if this only happens in the Middle East or only happens in India. There's like this divorcing of, oh, that happens there because it's more corrupt or you know, men are more patriarchal. And it is actually so wonderful to hear you say, no, these are stories that actually, this happens everywhere. Yes. You know, abuse, yes. rape. I think we are now in the century where we it, it it finally kind of comes out. I mean, slowly but surely. And and there were, you know, what comes out, you can just think there are millions behind one person that went through that. Mm. You know. So yes, it's 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 important to, but it's also important sometimes not to to get caught by you know your own frustrations when people, you know kind of label you or label your film. I remember I was much younger, so 23 years younger. Uh, it really got to me that it got labeled as a feminist film. I didn't want, at that point today, I want to be a feminist. I am a feminist. But at that point, when I was young, I didn't really want to be a feminist because I didn't feel I could identify with the feminism that the West would also uh, uh, promote. I didn't feel like, oh, I, I didn't identify. So today, feminism for me is, is way more profound than 23 years la uh, earlier. Well, it's expanded, it's more intersectional, yes. there's more space. For and I'm not scared anymore yeah. Yeah, to be a I'm feminist. <laughs> if you want to call me a feminist, call me a feminist. It's fine. <laughs> um, how was it watching the movie again, 23 years later? Very like, emotional, I think. Yeah. <laughs> It was very emotional for me. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see it for... I mean, I shouldn't cry about my own film. <laughs> or me. <but laughs> it's okay. It's beautiful. But uh, it was very emotional to see my film uh, 18 years later. I didn't see it for 18 years because I move on, you know. Mm. Uh, you have to move on in life. You cannot sit on your uh, success or on your... This film put me on the map. This is the film that that gave me opportunities. This is the film that is still uh, screened here at the Quad, at the Female Filmmakers Festival that I think is a, that's why I'm here. I'm support, they support us, we support them. We are coming for this Ooh. festival. It's an excellent uh, opportunity. Thank you very much. Yeah. All the girls, Shout all the women. Out. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I think it's, it's needed and there are little, uh, windows like that and i'm very proud to be part of this i came from la here from hollywood <laughs> <laughs> to new york to be part of this thank you very much for inviting me also thank you everybody <laughs> so last question um what keeps you hopeful and inspired about making film today I think the human being keeps me hope hopeful after all. It keeps me hopeful that you can trigger emotions uh, in human beings that may can trigger changes in certain human beings or at least compassion or at least uh, a certain consciousness about the world, about other cultures and about respecting uh, other cultures without necessarily being politically correct, uh, but in a certain sense to, yeah, to build the bridges between, between the West and the East. Mm. Thank you so much. You're it's a magnificent film. Thank you. Oh.
Oh, yeah, should we? Yeah. So does anybody have any questions for Nadia? Yep. Uh, I wanted to ask about the use of music in the film and what inspired it. I got a lot of that cross-cultural feeling for the time with the hip-hop, but specifically I wanted to ask <laughs> about the inclusion of uh, Juan Riguera song, La Latijubina, when the woman is married to the professor is dancing on what looks like to be their night. Uh, can you talk about, about where you were at that time and what made you use the music that you ended up using for the film? So there are three different composers. So there is the Swiss composer who was at the time a very big composer who was the, a very good friend of my ex-husband. So we, we worked, the three, my husband also is uh, mentioned, my ex-husband, we are still very good friends, no worries. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we uh, uh, he's also, he was working with me on that film, so he, kind of uh, introduced me to that musician and I wanted to have real violins, I wanted to have like a symphony orchestra. But of course the budget didn't allow it. So through that connection I could have, I, I had my little symphony orchestra who basically composed, I mean the composer Bovach, he composed the whole music of the film and then I wanted a young, hipster from Paris that I knew, a neighborhood guy who is doing a great hip-hop music in Arabic, and I always loved hip-hop. And uh, so I thought, okay, I'm gonna combine that. And then the third thing was the Spanish, as Ismael Ramirez, he's, uh, I think he, he's from, Col I mean, he's American, but he has Colombian roots. I think maybe that was my third trigger to put that little Spanish song when they are dancing. And I felt like I could kind of show the world that this is not just Tunisia, this is not just Arabic culture, this is a universal value. And with the music, I could also communicate that, that idea that was very dear to me at the time, very dear. Yes. Yes. Yes, I do. One, one, one. Samia, she she passed away. Uh, the doctor, the woman actor, uh, she passed away uh, three years later after the film. But she still could travel with me. We were together in Sa in uh, Sarajevo at the festival. We were together in Carthage. So she had still a very good moment to get the fruits of what she put in. Uh, uh, Amel Hadili is one of my favorite actresses. She's the wife of the professor. Uh, that is why I ended up actually shooting in Tunisia because uh, first I wanted to shoot in Egypt and then I was scared that all my family, my tribe would be there all every day on the shoot. So I, was, <laughs> I thought maybe it's better I go into another country to shoot. So it was Tunisia because of Amel Hadili. Amel, she stopped acting uh, because she was disgusted, I'm sorry, by the business of how awards are distributed to what actresses or actors she had a hard time. She was an excellent actress. She was one of the best actresses I ever worked with. Uh, she had a hard time politically. The business is also politics, as we know, as everything is politics. So she was disgusted and she stopped from one day to the other. And Noza, she's still acting. She's in France. She's, so they're all Tunisian actors except Noza. She came from uh, Paris. She's Moroccan originally, but she grew up in Paris. And that was more comfortable for everybody to have a mix of uh, cultures for that role because there are some nudity, there was some, you know, scenes that are, were difficult to shoot in Tunisia at the time. I mean, we were surrounded by a male crew. So that was not easy to, to you know, and the, the people, they knew what I'm doing, they read the script, they see the scenes. But I have to say, all the men of the crew, most of the men, they were extremely supportive of that film and of, of, of our work. Class and the middle class and then the lower class, you know, professor. Talk about, could you speak 
Yes, it, it, yes, that's, it's interesting. Okay, let's get started with the first one and then I make the second one short. You don't want to spend too much time on my ex-husband. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a, uh, in, in, so the class is, this, the class system is, is, is extremely uh, prominent still today. It, it, this film, it's a little bit sad, but it's still very, very actual. It's still very, it, it reflects what still goes on today. So um, the classes are still, for example, I can talk very much from Egypt, from, from my country. So the classes are, are, you know, lower class, middle class, upper class. You don't really cross into classes. A rich will never marry a poor. I mean, a poor will never get a rich. Uh, it's very, uh, how do you say, limited. So the, 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 it's like uh, communities. So the lower class community, they are amongst them. The middle class community, amongst them. The upper class community, amongst them. Which is funny because in the age, in, in Egypt, for example, ages, they mix very well. Like, you can be young, you can be old, you can be middle-aged, doesn't matter, we just mingle. Mm -hmm. But the classes still today, it doesn't really mingle, no. So yes, the lower class, I mean, I don't need to explain that, but uh, we all know that the lower class is, uh, has a harder life on this earth. The middle class is trying to be, not to become lower class, and the uh, upper class gets more and more up. I mean, that's, that's, that's everywhere. That's also in your country. Eve? Oh yeah, the script. So, at that time, I was a pretty, how you say, a hyperactive, insecure, uh, very sensitive girl, and also a little bit aggressive, and a little bit rebellious. So my husband kept me on track. It means that he gave me, on track means he supported me in every way uh, to make this film. And when I have my crisis or my anxiety, which, uh, or it's not really anxiety, but like this, this, this self-confidence that would like kind of run out, uh, he would, yeah, he would, he would support me. So in that sense, he would read scripts and give me feedback. He, he collaborated in that sense. I wrote the script, but he was the mirror he would read and say how he feels about or how it came through and sometimes I would do changes and sometimes not. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Was there one in the back? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I was just really curious about the scene where we have the man who's in the alley and he's like singing. I saw this man singing and I thought this is amazing because this reflects the, the, the hope of Layla and at the same time to be abandoned because she was abandoned, right? She, was, she, she, she couldn't go back home. She lost her, you know, her future husband or her fiancé, as we say. And uh, so when I, when I saw that man sitting there in that, in that little market, I thought that will reflect, it's not so much the words that he thinks, but it's more this moment of emotion that she has when she sees him and it gives her comfort. Mm -hmm. So it's more, the song is more to give comfort and life continues than the, than the lyrics. That's why I didn't translate them because they are not so important. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.